recording, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the whole thing and you're like, crap. <laughs> okay. Take two, you guys. Take two. <laughs> I know. I'll do it again tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so welcome, everyone. We are having a webinar conversation um, on testing positive. And I am joined by Kirsty, who's in the UK with me. And we've got two Canadians. We've got Parker. And we've got Nicole. Um, all of these young people have decided to take part, so thank you. And uh, actually, we've all tested positive, so I'm also um, in that group as well. Um, so I think we'll have a good conversation here. But if you'd just like to introduce yourselves, kind of like just a, a short introduction about your connection to Huntington's, um, that would be a good starting point, I think. So who wants to start? <laughs> You take. Right. Okay, Nicole. Uh, uh, Nicole. Nicole likes to talk, so we'll start with Nicole. That's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm 28, and I'm from a town just outside of Toronto, um, in Canada. And I tested positive um about a year and a half ago. I've known about HTC my entire life. My connection is through my dad. So my dad's positive. Um, he's symptomatic. And then both of his sisters were positive. One's already passed away and one's at the end. And then um, it was inherited through my grandfather as well. Um, so yeah, that's my connection to HD. Okay. Parker? Um, I suppose go more. <laughs> I'm Parker from London, Ontario, born and raised, uh, 25. Uh, my connection with HD is uh, my mom has HD and is suffering from the symptoms right now, as well as my grandma passed away. Uh, I tested positive about three years ago, and that's my connection with HD. Okay, Kirsty. Hi, I'm Kirsty. Uh, I'm from Southport in the UK. Uh, I've known about HD my whole life. I got it um, from my dad. He got it from his mum. His sister had it. There's been a lot in our family. Uh, my dad has it. My brother has it. I have it. My cousin has it. So it's quite well spread in our family. Um, I started doing, I found out when I was 19 and then I went in for testing at, because I wanted to know before my 21st. Um, and I've been with a brilliant neurologist for all my symptoms and I've just done charity work so that's how I'm involved in the HD community. When exactly did you get, how long ago was it when you got tested Kirsty? Um, well don't tell anyone but I'm 30 so it's 10 years now. Oh, <laughs> you know it by the pigtails so yeah 10 years I've known. Um, it started off memory loss for me but everybody in my family is different all their symptoms are different for each person um and then I just decided to get after a few years uh to start getting involved in uh, charity work so I do a lot of events and things like that and I've just met a lot of lovely people online because of it okay thank you um so I have a question. So what made you all want to get tested then? Um, Parker, maybe if we start with you this time. Um, when I got tested, it was, uh, I, I have known H about HD my whole life. And um, it was actually a choice me and my ex-girlfriend decided to make. We were engaged at the time. So we thought that moving on with our life, that was a, a good thing we wanted to know. Something we, we could plan for. And I always felt that knowing is better than not knowing in my opinion because at least if i know i can prepare for those things so that was why i decided to get tested okay nicole um so i decided to get tested um when my dad actually tested positive for hd so we always thought that my dad was going to be negative just because we didn't think that the likely three out of three just, um so when my dad actually I did test positive about three years before I tested my life kind of fell apart 
Um, I ended up moving home, decided I didn't want to work with kids anymore. My entire life just shifted, started running my own business. And then one day it was like, well, I don't know, like I'm not happy with my life. And I just wasn't happy with where I was at and where I was going. And I felt like knowing this answer would help me decide as to whether or not I wanted to actually continue to grow my uh, my lash business or if I actually wanted to um, go back to school because when my dad um, positive I actually dropped out of university with only one course left to complete to graduate so yeah that was my my actually go back and get tested was because I needed to figure out where my life was going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Kirsty? Um, well, to be honest, it's, it's pretty similar to you guys. Uh, I was in a long-term relationship at the time. Um, and uh, to be honest, I wanted to know for a while just because I noticed quite a few changes in myself and I thought, you know, I'd finished college, I got my A-levels, but something just wasn't right. And I wanted to know just for long-term purposes really where I stood. Um, but I couldn't know for, for quite a bit because my dad didn't know. And if I found out, it would like tell him without him being tested. So that was like against his rights. So um, I had to wait for a long time for my dad to go through the process. But to be honest, when I went through it, I was more um, grateful than anything because I, I knew where I stood because I had options like getting a car and going to university and I didn't want to do all that if it wasn't really something that I could do with my future so I, I am glad I found out and obviously it meant that I didn't just go on and have kids and all that stuff um, because I knew where I stood so it was more peace of mind for me um, and I just wanted to know I knew something was off so I wanted to know either way what was going on um so yeah but it, it turned out that my dad found out and then my brother found out and I found out within like three months so we all found mm. out and got tested positive at pretty much the same time um but I, I'm personally glad that I did that and I know where I stand and where I'm going so it that was my personal choice was that um was that planned by you, your father and, and your your brother uh, to get tested no time. it just sort of turned out that way uh yeah. because we'd me and my brother had gone in for counseling sort of around the same time um but then we we had to wait for dad's results before we could find anything out about ourselves so it was dad's and then because we'd both had the counseling it was just like we could go in for it then so it just turned out to be really close together um hmm. So, uh, but it's it's quite a lot of people have got it in our family. There's still people that I won't name names because it's their personal journey, but they don't know yet or they're not sure if they want to know. So it's a preference to everybody. Um, but, you know, some have it, some don't, some don't want to know, some do, some aren't sure. It's just sort of like a personal choice. I think we were all quite young when we got tested. Um, How old were you, Matt? I was 19 when I got tested, um, which was 12 years ago. <laughs> Where did that go? <laughs> I almost swore myself. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and Nicole and Parker, how old were you two? Um, I was 26. Okay. When I... I was 20. Do. So I come from a big family and we're all like five siblings and we're all really close in age. So a brother who's a year up, a sister who's a year down, a sister who's two years down from that and another one who's a year down from that. So um, my older brother hasn't been tested and then I could have been tested, but I decided to wait. And then my sister, who's a year younger than me, she was the first one to be tested. Okay. And, and then my three sisters in sequence all got tested before I did. And then I decided to get tested. Yeah, uh, siblings makes it very <laughs> uh, emotionally difficult, doesn't it? Especially because, yeah. like, it was all happening at the same time, right? Like, we we're all so close in age that it was all kind yeah. of at that coming of age 
kind of around the same time. Well, I was thinking that we're all, we've all tested quite young and that's actually not so common. Um, I mean, Nicole, you're 26 when you got tested, so it's not, not, not so bad there, but um, you know, you're a little bit older and more mature, let's say, uh, but we were a bit younger. <laughs> um, I before my new book getting tested, it's always been on my mind since I've always known about it. But um, like Chrissy, I didn't want to tell my dad his fate, and I was just waiting for him to find out in order for me to test. And then, yeah, just similar to Christy as well, like my sister and I found out our results two weeks apart, so. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking, I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely feel you. I feel like you know exactly what I went through. Like almost identical yeah. story. And it's still going on, you know, you still, you still have people in your life and I think it's it it must be so hard for people that get tested negative and have to watch their siblings. You know, it's just as hard on everybody, really. Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard on everyone. That's something I'm going to discuss tomorrow on the on the testing negative group, which your sister's in, Parker. My yeah, Sadie. She's yeah. at school now. I don't get to see her as often right now. Um, she's away in St. Catharines, but. Well, you, can watch, you can watch her webinar. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> um, I think. Well, my point I was going with there was that it's, it's you know usually people kind of you know they might wait a little bit. Um, you don't see too many kind of who've tested young, um, yeah. but you know, normally like in the forties they assume don't all, like forties and fifties. They sort of assume that's the way yeah. that it is. People it's wait. It's quite on, nice to speak to people that tested young because I've never personally mm -hmm. met anybody my age and what I'd went through at that age you don't come across that many people even in the HD community where you like meet everybody and every type of person and family it's still really rare to come across people that oh, went through the same thing I agree um so with regards to your testing process um how did you how did you react when you found out, but also kind of like, how are you feeling in the build up to it? All that kind of stuff. Um, Kirsty, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, well, to be honest, it was a bit of a funny one for me because my brother had got diagnosed like just before me and my dad. And because I was so young, um, the genetic lady that I, I saw, I don't really hold it against her, but I, you know, did sort of have a word with her on my results day and say, just don't do that to anybody else. And um, she just kept saying to me that, you know, I was so young and it, it was just because my dad and my brother had it and not to be paranoid and um, I had nothing to worry about. And she was the same, you know, to the point where I was sort of thinking like it was turning my own mind, even though I knew that's what I went in for. So um, trying to convince you not to do it in a way she not felt, to not do it but she was sort of like making out to me that everything was going to be fine and then that sunk, sunk in my head and then I was thinking I don't want to sit in the same room my brother got diagnosed and be told I'm fine in front of him mm. so that's the mindset I went in with I was so nervous to have that around my brother and then the same woman had to tell me I had it so I was just like look just don't no, even if you're thinking I don't think they've got it just don't put that on somebody and on the day I, I, they were like I know it doesn't sound like much but they were like 25 minutes late and I was like my heart was dropping at the sound of everyone walking down the corridor anyway <laughs> and then they turned up and with, with it in like a like a cart like an envelope like some sort of weird game show and then she said oh do you mind if a student nurse comes in and so I said, yeah, because I wasn't thinking. I just wanted to know what was in the envelope. <laughs> and so I said, you know, and don't sort of throw to student nurses in because it's a very personal experience you go through with your family and it's a devastating day and someone you've never met sort of stood in the corner. So it wasn't really the best experience um, for me personally, but I don't think it's ever going to be. I just think it would help if they didn't say anything to you, even if they're thinking it. How did you feel when you were told, when you heard those words? Um, 
to be honest, it was a weird sense of of um, relief because I, I'd known something was going on. And I'm incredibly close with my brother. So I sort of felt it in sync with him, like it was a partnership, like we were in it for the long haul. We'll go through it together sort of vibes. Because I think if you don't feel that way, it can really like sink you under. It was further down the line for me that it it hit me and I went to a dark place. But at the time, it's sort of shock. And that's why I do, I'm do. i trying to do a petition so that you get counselling afterwards for a little bit. Yeah. Entirely. Because it's a lot to just go home with that and all he gets a follow-up letter. And, mm. uh, you know, it's such big news. You get so much counselling before and then nothing afterwards and that's when your life really changes. So um, I just wish people would get more help afterwards. Oh, I agree with that, yeah. I agree with that. Um, Nicole, same question. How, how did you kind of react when you found out? Um, well, mine was... Um, my sister and she wanted to get her results right when she moved home and, and uh, we were in the um for me to get my blood drawn and for her to get her results they ended up booking us um the exact same day within an hour apart for me to start my first appointment and for her like to have my blood drawn and for her to get her results and and I was fuming I was so upset I ended up calling the hospital and um they ended up changing her appointment yeah it doesn't sound like a good uh, thing, does it? um so having it <laughs> no so uh I got my blood drawn but I was very, very focused on my sister because I knew she was going to get her results the following and um I didn't want my parents to have to worry to think about both of us so I told them that I went but I didn't get my blood drawn I just thought that I should wait so I kind of hid that from my family um so that they could focus on my sister and Bless then I, went to, I went on a camp, the HDO camp and I was kind I was really numb like everyone at the HDO camp helped me through because I, I was just a complete wreck while I was waiting for my results um I feel like waiting for the results was worse than like being at risk and worse than knowing I've tested positive um for me that was the worst part so uh and but also- then yeah, and I just kept I'm not a religious person and I just kept like praying that my Oma was watching over and that if it had to be my sister I tested positive it would be me um and sure enough like when I got phone calls, I just broke down in tears. I felt like something had been answered. So the day that results came in, I actually had two friends from YPAD, which is a youth um, Huntington's group. And um, I had two of them, and then my mom was... And... When they, re- I made my mom wait in the waiting room while I got the results. It was a very personal choice. And at that time, my sister and my dad both didn't know that I was getting my results. Um, and yeah, I just sat there and um, I, was cra- I was crazy, I'd say. Everything that someone told me at the camp that went wrong for them in their, their test a counselor. And I was like, I want, I don't want you to open the letter. I don't want you to find out before I know. Because people were telling me they came out to get them. And I, so I called her and I said that. And she's like, well, I have to open it to make sure it's yours. And then and I was like, well, then I want somebody else to come get me. I don't want it to be you. I want it to be someone who has no idea what the results are. And then she was like, well, it has to be me. I'll tell you I'll be smiling positive or negative I'm not gonna lie. um but then yeah when the pause when I, I didn't even hear the words I didn't even hear the number I just saw on the piece of paper when she showed it and um I was just like it's okay like I, all I could do is smile because that's what I do when I'm overwhelmed and I was like it's okay like, like it's all good guys it's 
<laughs> and then I got them to bring my mom in and my mom was like, okay, so what is it? And then I fell apart. I stopped crying. Um, and then she's like, I couldn't even get the words to say that I tested positive. And then she's like, hey, what's your number? And I said 42 and that broke me even worse. I didn't know I could cry even harder than what I was crying. Um, and then, yeah, then I pulled my and the day was just kind of numb. Like I didn't know, I was like, okay, I know this and it's all good because it just, that, um, that I need to now make a decision with my life. And I actually jumped on a plane two hours later to go visit um, one of my friends through YPAD who was living in Nashville. So I jumped on a plane and I went to see her for a week. Oh, that's good. So, uh, yeah. And within that time, my mom had told my, my sister and my dad, off of me so they had time to process before um so yeah since then it uh I think it hits me it's like a roller coaster and I don't know if Parker and Christy or you Matt all feel the same way I feel like testing positive the first six months was like a roller coaster there were days where I was like oh I'm completely fine I'm taking the results awesome and then there were days I was like oh, I'm a mess like <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Huntington's. So, yeah. And yeah, there, it was things that I just couldn't explain to people. I was like, like I'm like, Huntington's. And they're like, yeah, but you don't have. And, but it, the roller coaster was something Crazy. that I <laughs> experienced. Yeah, it still comes now and then, but it's definitely not as often as what it was within the first few months. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Parker, how did you react when you found out? Well, well, at the time, I was I was 22, just got out of like high school, I had a nice car. I, I was living on top of the world. I felt like I couldn't, so I, I didn't prep for I could have a Huntington's. For me, after my sisters had tested negative, that was my only, and like Huntington's being in my life for so <laughs> long, I knew that I wanted to get tested. So. When I booked it, my family knew I was, like, I got my blood taken and everything. But when they called me in to actually get my results, it never dawned on me that I could test positive. So I went during my lunch break. I had no support system. No one knew I was going. So, yeah, it was. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, and, like, I, I don't recommend that. Because when I got there, um. I, I went in, I was in work clothes. I told everybody at work I was going. I'd be back shortly. I'm a ball of energy. So, like, I didn't, I, I didn't see it. I didn't have any, like, strategies. I had no one to call. So I went in, and she told me, and I come from, like, being an older brother, not the oldest. I was always taught, you know, not to cry, show your sisters that you're there for them. So, like, she told me, and I sat there like a stone, right? Just, and I, and I, 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 I was stunned. My, my, my life was riding on a high wave since high school. You know, everything was going great. You know what I mean? Like, my sisters had tested negative. Like, I, I was, and then I got the results, and it, I, didn't, I didn't really let it sink in right away. Like, I just kind of took it and was like, like I, I felt good. And then I, I tried to call my girlfriend, and she was at work. So then she didn't answer. So then I was like, I started to feel different when I was driving back to work. And then I tried to call my sister. And, and they didn't answer. So me being distraught, I left a message and told them I had tested positive on their answering machine. <laughs> oh, my God. Which is something you can't do when it affects your whole family. Like, you got to think about other people. Right? As much as I was, right, like, as much as I was riding my high, like, you got to think about other people that you care about. So then I got back to work, and the guy that I was working with, my coworker, he knew what was going on. He was a, my friend's dad. I worked with him. And when I told him, that's when I broke down and cried. Like, that's when I was finally, like, like when I had to say it, and I had no one there when I went home. Like, no, no one was answering. No one, it was, like, midday. Everybody was at work. Like, no one, so then I had to go home and, you know what I mean, and just sit there by myself and, and dwell on it. It was honestly one of the toughest things I ever had to do. Because How at did that you point, do that I, by yourself? 
honestly, it was so hard. Because, like, <laughs> I have a great family, and my girlfriend at the time was really good. I just didn't let anybody know. Like, I, 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 I didn't prepare for the no. I mean, for the yes. I, I, I You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't recommend it at all. Right? Like, you should have somebody. <laughs> well, he and I turned <laughs> I turned out okay. I, I made it. Parkers are, uh, are Parker, I mean, like, don't do what Parker does. Like, like have <laughs> yeah, this the, is the what not to do. Right? Okay, like, like, don't pull a Parker. Uh, not to do, don't pull a Parker. I think uh, for myself, I went in, and I think a lot of people go in thinking they're going to be negative, uh, thinking they're going to be positive. And kind of hoping potentially that they'll be negative, right? So you kind of hope, uh, hoping for the best, but planning for the worst. But there are people like yourself, Parker, who go in and they're just like, no, I think I'm going to be negative, and I think I'm going to be okay. And My glass is always half full. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it, it, it's what it is, and and you know, <laughs> maybe it's your way of coping with the process that you're going through it. I don't know, but. It just it's just funny that people do different things, you know. <laughs> I don't know how you did it, Parker, because I couldn't have survived that day without my family there. So hats off to you for even getting through that day, honestly. And at the end of the day, I did end up like meeting up with my girlfriend after she was done work and I went out and drove and, and saw my sisters and we hugged it out and it was after it they was realized. Great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Af- after that, but those initial couple of hours helped me grow as a person for sure. Yeah. Bless you. That's awful. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So it was been a few years for you all here. So, and even longer for for, for me and Kirsty. So, I mean, how are you guys <laughs> feeling now? Uh, sorry, Kirsty. <laughs> how are you guys feeling now? And uh, I tend to use the term. Have you accepted the results? Um, and some people kind of like that term and other people don't. But um, for me, I felt like I accepted it at some point and I kind of just live my life now with that. But um, I'm wondering if you guys feel that way at all, if you got to a point where you're just kind of accepting it or you're, just, you're still kind of moving on with your lives, trying to find out. Um, Nicole, how are you feeling? Uh, I have definitely... Um, accept it I live every day um to the best that I can I I embrace every moment that I can I do everything that I want to do now um knowing that that is gonna be in my my life um I don't let it hold me back from doing things uh my dad doesn't want me to play soccer up for soccer he's so afraid of me getting hit in the head but I don't I've accepted the fact that this can be like this is my fate like but I always like to think of it now as like a mystery box in Mario Kart where <laughs> you, you could get or you could get something like I, I just found that I just like, that I'm gonna have to be like <laughs> That's definitely a new comparison to me too. I've got that one. Yeah. <laughs> like there's other things that I'm gonna come across that might happen before I get to the age. I've accepted it. I've embraced it. If anything, it's pushed me to um to be the best me and to live my life better than what I was living before. Like I've yeah. gone back to school to finish that one course with. I'm going to be graduating, so that, I'm pretty proud of that. And yeah, it's just it's I've accepted it. <laughs> Good for you, uh, Parker. But I do still have days, even now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I think that's normal. Yeah, I agree. I I accepted it too. Um, I think I got old enough. Um, I started to understand it more. Um, I started getting after every day like i'll get up and i'll go for a run in the morning like just trying to live a better life so like if it does happen like at least i'm like took care of myself you know what i mean like 
you're always gonna deal with it but like for me I like to be able to share my story like don't do what I did when you take your results like I can I've met a lot of new friends like me and Nicole talk all the time right if she's having a rough day she can call there's other people that I've met through iPad like great relationships it makes me feel better like I feel like if I'm having a rough day there's people that I didn't know three years ago that I can call better than friends I've had since high school yeah yeah that's very true uh Kirsty how's it been for you um well <clears throat> it was a bit dodgy for a few years uh when I first found out but I think it's just something to sort of adjust to I don't think it ever becomes normal because I still have days where I can't get out of bed I'm either like taking over the world and doing try events or I don't get out of bed and just watch Netflix and feel sorry for myself but it just gets me through why I just have to go minute to minute. And obviously, like, when it's not just you, it's your family as well. And you have to watch them suffer that. That's a lot. You guys are all going through that too. So it's just a, a daily thing for me. I don't think you particularly ever get used to it or, like, want it in your life or anything. But it, I've, I've thought of it in a way now where it's something I have. It's not who I am. Because for a long time, it, I thought I was my diagnosis. So I just sort of gave up. Um, but then doing the charity work and stuff and meeting everyone and doing stuff for a good cause. And, and like you guys are saying, uh, I'm closer to the HD community than I am like my own family sometimes and friends. And, you know, I, I think you lose a lot of people along the way after your diagnosis. So to have everyone... Um, from the HD community like on your side and even if you're not talking you're just reading their posts it's nice to know that someone's in the same position as you are and you're not by yourself ever um and you just sort of take it day by day and just do the best that you can really that's a very honest answer thank you and I feel very similar to that you know it is even though I've accepted it you know you do think about it um, and you do have days where it does get to you a bit more than others. Um, but for the most part, you know, just try to enjoy life and, and, and do what you can. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the alternative is, is just to do nothing and just let kind of HD win. I don't think that's something that anyone should do, really. Um, OK, what about thoughts on the future for yourself then? Um, how are you feeling looking looking towards the next years coming up? Uh, Kirsty? Um, I've got so much to look forward to, to be honest. I mean, at, at a certain point, I've not I've really not felt like a future was really for me um, in the sense of settling down and things like that. But it, it, I'm in a very, very happy place. I've got wonderful people around <laughs> me. Um, I'm going to keep doing charity stuff I'm going to keep hopefully in touch with I'd love to keep in touch with you guys too now uh, and just basically just do we all we can do is the best we can <laughs> basically but just keep you just got to keep going that's all you can do Nicole um for the next few years like looking great I've uh like I said I'm going to be graduating from a program I thought I was never going back to um, and I've applied for teachers college because my goal is to be a teacher um, I love working with kids and I just want to travel more and I just with like a smile um yeah <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for what the next few years have to bring. I'm excited for traveling and for school and for accomplishing all everything that I've accomplished um, Good. and everything I will. So, yes. Good for you. And Parker? Um, well, it feels like every year I get more and more involved in the HD community. So I hope in the future that continuously does progress because uh, out in BC and Kelowna was my first conference and I think I've gone to almost everyone since and then done fundraising and been all over the place with the family so like I feel that's great I have personal goals that I, I want to reach in the next couple of years like running a half marathon and things like that um, I should get my electrical license 
And that's not something like I gave up on because I tested positive. I started late. Like, I didn't get into it right out of high school. I was doing other stuff. I was in the reserves for a bit. So like it was like 24, I think, when I started doing electrical. So I, I might not get my license till I'm like 28 or 29. And a lot of people would back off on that because I have HD. But I just said, these are the goals that I have. I'm going to do what I can do to accomplish them. And when my body starts like shutting, like I'll deal with that when that comes. But right now I can still, you know what I mean? Go to work and get closer to my ticket, get up and I can run that 10 kilometers to get closer to my marathon. Like I'm still able to do those things. So I'm going to keep doing them until I can't. Good for you, Parker. I like you. We were very positive. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Matt? What's in your future? Oh, nothing else now. (laughs) 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 I'm in my 30s now. I'm done. No, no, it's fine. Uh, You know, well, I have a son who's two and a bit, um, who's not at risk of HD thanks to PGD IVF. So I'm very, very lucky um, to have my wife and son. Um, And yeah, I'm going to enjoy spending time with them as much as I can. Um, and keep working on HDO, of course, because that's a, my passion. And then, yeah, uh, try and uh, reach more young people and help more young people um, who need help. So, yeah, that's going to keep me busy, I think. And travel like Nicole. Hopefully we can all go to Glasgow in May. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so last question. Uh, so advice for other young people who might be thinking about going through testing. Um, Nicole, do you want to start? Oh, man. <laughs> Make a cake. Um, my, <laughs> my advice is, um, yeah, that's something that I don't know if you want to take it from me. I year celebration, and it's going to be continuing. It's going to be a tradition. I <laughs> get a cake. And I put F-U-H-D on it, and <laughs> friends and I have a party and we celebrate, so it's not a bad day. We celebrate the day. Uh, um, yeah. Just my advice truly is ask people that have tested both positive and negative um, before you decide results um, to even have your blood drawn. I feel like that was probably the best thing that I did was seeing both perspectives of what people did for their testing process, how they um, coped with it. Um, yeah, like how you dealt with it and the different perspectives of testing both positive and negative. And um, also, don't be afraid to ask the questions that make people uncomfortable. Um, I am, I think, known for asking those questions that put people on the spot. Um, but without, if there's something you really want to know, there's a reason why you want to see if it comes surrounding um, the testing. Ask those questions. If that person doesn't feel comfortable answering, there will be someone that will answer. And uh, it can probably benefit you in the long run. As to um, as to what their answer is, and just yeah, embrace every moment of the testing process and have a plan for the week after the day of you test. So week after, because that first week is the hardest week of testing. I find um, I'm just trying to adjust with the results and get back. Um, oh man, yeah. And don't let HD stop you from living is probably my best advice. Yeah, embrace it. <laughs> Good. Parker, what's your advice? Um, my biggest thing is get involved in the HD community young. It's not something I did. These, these are friends that I could have had years ago, even before I got tested. Right, A support system that would have been huge for me. There's all these camps. There's all this information. If you're at risk at all. You know, what I mean, even if you don't want to get tested yet, get involved in the community, right? That you can learn a lot. There's lots of fun. Like they can send you play. You can meet a lot of good people, people that can help you when you do decide to get tested or if you're having family issues, people that have gone through it or are going through it right now. 
not just friends that don't really understand HD. That's, I think, my biggest thing. It's just get involved in the community as soon as you can. Yeah. And Kirsty? Um, yeah, pretty much the same, to be honest. I think the thing I sort of wish someone had told me would be to um, integrate yourself uh, with other people in the HD community because there's no level of understanding like people who are going through what you were going through like you, your family and your friends can be incredible partners everyone can be incredible mm -hmm. but just to have that connection like I, i've never met you guys in my life mostly like the other side of the world but just talking to you you just feel not by yourself so just mm -hmm. ask questions add people don't be afraid to make friends because everyone's really nice i didn't really want to reach out and i was kicking myself when i did get involved because i thought i could have had this for a long time and i i was really struggling at points i was in like a very dark place was very suicidal it's not a lot of people talk about the dark sides of it but it can be really good you can have amazing friends you can have a brilliant backup um so yeah just don't go through it alone don't don't think because you're protecting your family and everyone that you should just not talk about it because there are people you can talk to well i mean you've oh i have one oh for god's sake nicole <laughs> <laughs> no go on then Go on then, Marlene. My, I'm joking. Carry on. One of my biggest pieces of advice is just because their family doesn't mean they need to be there the day of. The biggest support the day of are people that have already gone through it that aren't biologically related to you. Um, just because they can be there to support you the day of and feeling like you have to support your family because they're also your results 100 percent 100 percent yeah pick pick the right people to take with you for your results don't pick leave it on a message we'll pick anyone parker <laughs> pick somebody. Yeah, pick it. honestly take somebody <laughs> <laughs> okay um i mean i i totally agree with the the hd community being a, a great support system and yeah, I mean, hopefully we can get people in as quickly as possible and as young as possible because it really does help. And, and just, you know, it's like, you know, talking on here, but, you know, when I, whenever I go to a camp or anything like that that we do, it's always amazing to see the young people connecting and just so quickly. And it's just they don't need to have to share everything. They know that they're all going through the same kind of things. They know that that the experiences are all shared there so it's really uh beautiful and, and very useful so yeah totally agree with that um i'm done bye <laughs> <laughs> no no thank you guys I, I really really appreciate you guys you all taking the time um uh to talk about your your experiences so honestly and openly seriously thank you so much um and I do hope that we'll see you all in Glasgow. I mean, um, I know Parker, you've applied and I'm going to speak to yeah. Kirsty. So fingers crossed, yeah, that we'll see yeah. you all in Glasgow. That would be great. Yeah. Um, mm. Kirsty, I'll send you a message later about Congress. Just give you some details, OK? Yeah, OK. So, and let's all keep in touch, please. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And you so guys are awesome, by yeah. the way. You're all really brave and I love it. Yeah. Bye-bye, folks. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care.